Good day and welcome to our unboxing of this, the Dell All-in-One 7710. It's a 2022 model and we're going to unbox it, we're going to configure it, and we're going to benchmark it and review it. So let's get to it. There's nothing on the box of any particular interest. Keyboard and mouse, yay. AC adapter, I've got the North. These are universal. This is not. This is North American, and that's where I am, so that's good. Plus the brackets to set it up. That's the stands. Now because I might be returning this, I'm going to leave as much of this packaging as intact as I can. These just slide on and pop. So you just click them in. Easy peasy. And by the way, yes, we're going to take them back off and we disassemble this because we're going to show you how to upgrade it. Okay, so here it is. Now this is the 27 inch model and I've chosen a particular CPU. Well, I'm gonna put up all of the specs, all of the product offering matrix right here so you can see what uh, the choices were. But in my case, I've chosen the Intel i7 12th generation 1255U. I've got a separate video explaining, which I'll put a link to in the top right hand corner, explaining what the differences are between these CPUs so that you can understand what to look for when you're buying uh, one of these uh, units or actually any computer. But the 1255U offers a lot of power. It has two of what Intel is now calling performance cores and eight efficiency cores. And the two performance cores can handle two threads. So what that boils down to is this can handle 12 threads at the same time. A thread, if you don't really get it, don't worry about it, just a process. So before we get this running and configure it and then benchmark it, we're going to show you all of the components on here. We're going to explain what's wrong with it. We'll also explain what's right with it. So uh, let's go over the uh, USB ports and that kind of stuff. We'll do it very quickly. Then we will do a quick disassembly to show you how to upgrade it in the future. It's actually pretty easy to do. And then we'll get to the benchmarking and the testing. So first thing, let's go over. The speaker system apparently is pretty good. I haven't heard it myself, but apparently it's pretty good. Not that important to me. Second thing, the camera. This was a big negative for me. This camera was reported as not being infrared. I actually asked Dell about it and you think, well, why would you want an infrared camera? Well, because I want to use Windows Hello and in particular, I just want to sit down and have it sign in like my current Dell all-in-one. And that gets to the price of this unit. I paid about $1,400 after all the discounts and things that you get. And uh, that's a pretty reasonable price, but I'm also going to buy an HP, I think. And I'm going to uh, compare the two of them uh, and then I will decide which one I'm going to keep because I found an HP that might actually be a better product. Now, that being said, it has some serious drawbacks and I don't usually like the HP build quality and Dell build quality is excellent. So, let's keep going. That's a USB Type-C port. Before we get to the interesting stuff on the back, let's look at the bottom because there are a couple of things here that you may not be aware of. There's a power button under here, right underneath that bracket. And there's also a little button here that nobody uses. And what that lets you do is switch between inputs. So you can use this as an external monitor if you want and not use the computer component at all. Okay, so let's go through the ports. These are old school USB 3.1 ports. They do support power and wake up support. So if you have a mouse and you plug it in, you can have those wake it up, which is nice. That's your HDMI in port. So if you want to connect this screen and just use it as a screen with another computer, that's where you'd plug it in. That is your HDMI out port, and that is where you'd connect a second screen or an external screen. That's your power jack, one gigabit network, RJ45 connector if you want to use it. And this is really disappointing. This is the old USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports. And not to get too weedy here, but these are Gen 1 2.1 ports, not even the 2.2 ports, which means that the maximum transfer speed through these is a terrible 10 gig per second. When I say terrible, it's fine, but everybody else has put in USB 3.2 version 2.2 ports, which are 20 gigabit per second. And a lot of machines have Thunderbolt, which is exactly the same thing, but 40 gig. Thunderbolt's just a branding. Here's another thing that's a bit of a disappointment, although I don't personally care. This is the headphone speaker combo jack. So yes, speakers are built in in the front and there's two actual microphones on the front as well. My experience with Dell headphone jacks is they don't work very well. 
So they often just don't work at all. It's a bit disappointing to see that there's just one jack there instead of having a separate jack for a headphone and microphone. However, almost nobody's going to use it, so who cares? Another weird thing is an SD card reader. Nice to have, but could you put it in a worse place? Right behind the machine. I don't know why they didn't put it on the side or anywhere else. That's a really terrible location for it. Okay, let's get to pulling this apart and we'll start going through the parts. Now, as you can see, I have lots of specialized tools. You don't need them. This unit has Wi-Fi 6, which pretty much everything does these days. So, um, well, here's the thing. If you're buying a computer that doesn't have Wi-Fi 6, that's a pretty good indication you shouldn't buy it. So I wouldn't buy it because it has Wi-Fi 6. I'd buy it. I would avoid it if it doesn't. Okay, moving past that, that is your hard drive. And you think, holy crap, that's a hard drive? Yep, that's a 2230, which is 22 millimeters wide by 30 millimeters long. And if you have a 2280, which is the more traditional size, you simply take this screw and move it down to here. Well, the screw that's under here, move it down to here. And then you can pop on a larger drive, a physically larger drive. Here's your memory. Now, another weird thing about this particular machine is instead of using two eight gig sticks, they put an eight and a four in. But because this is DDR memory, the D stands for dual, they really should be paired. They don't have to be, but they should be to get the best performance. And speaking of angles, this will tilt, these hinges will tilt. I believe it's 25 degrees, which is a pretty good distance. All right, so I've plugged it in and let's power it up. The switch is right here. There we go, little LED. Now, in case you're wondering, yes, this does come with a very nice wireless keyboard and mouse. However, I'm probably, well, probably is a bit much. I have a pretty good chance at returning this because there's a couple of things that I really don't like about it. In particular, I really dislike these type of stands. Most people won't care, but because I'm tall, I need to raise it up. And it's, I have the feeling this is gonna drive me nuts. Uh, in addition, the USB ports on the back really make me crazy that, in, that Dell cheaped out on this and didn't provide really what they should have as a minimum standard. They really should have provided at least the newer spec USB ports. Okay, let's go through the setup. I'm going to do this quick because everybody knows how to do this. I'm not going to waste your time. Ah, so even though I was told this doesn't have face recognition, it does. This has the better camera. That's a big hairy deal to me. Okay, so keep looking directly at the camera. Here we go. Now, in case you're wondering, Microsoft has to ask all of these questions in separate screens because of the law in Europe. The General Protection Data Regulation, or GDPR in Europe, says every question that you ask in these types of things must be asked on a separate page and must be clear. You can't just have a page with 20 things on it and ask people to accept it all. This is just garbage for setup. It doesn't make any difference. I'm going to click skip. So here we go with Windows 11. Windows 11 is really just Windows 10.1 with this silly bar that they put in the bottom, which drives me crazy because every time you add something or launch something, this bar expands or contracts, which means things move. I don't want things to move. I want them in the same place all the time. So you have to right click, go to taskbar settings, expand taskbar behavior, change it from center to left. First thing I want to do is get rid of this garbage McAfee security antivirus. So just right click apps and features. So while that's going, what we should also do is run a Windows update to get everything current. Take a look at performance, change graph to logical processors. That's nice. So there's a few other things you might want to do. The first is go into your advanced options in Windows update, and you probably want to turn on. Dell firmware, yep, you bet we want that. And while we're waiting for these updates to finalize, we should also go run the Dell update. Okay, so we've updated everything, and now what we need to do is turn off the antivirus because antivirus will really screw up your benchmarks. 
we're going to use three different tools here. Just before we run the test, what we need to do is bring up Task Manager and make sure that the system is quiet, meaning that there's not a lot going on. All right, so you'll notice I ran this three times, and that's because you should always run a benchmark at least three times before you make a determination. So as you can see here, my Nova Bench score is 2379, and my old, current Dell All-in-One with an Intel i7-8700 has an overall mark of 1827. The big bumps in the CPU and in the GPU. Let's run a couple more benchmarks. Okay, so as a desktop PC, this thing is the cat's butt. As a gaming PC, it's not great, and as a high-end workstation, it's also not great. That's all related to video, I believe, the video card. Well, let's look at some of the details. What this is saying is that this hardware, compared to other computers with similar or the same hardware, this is performing above expectations. And this is some pretty good, some pretty good numbers here. The video graphics are not scoring very high because it's being compared against very high-end video cards. For day-to-day -day use and for most games, it is excellent. The solid-state drive that's in there is pretty good, and the memory is pretty good as well. Okay, so what this is up against for me is a HP Pavilion, which I'm also going to buy and test. Because the HP Pavilion that I'm looking at has a much more powerful CPU with 20 cores. Hey, if you found this video useful, please click like. It really helps with the Google algorithms. You can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca and subscribe would also be appreciated. And leave a comment. Uh, if you don't want to get a hold of us directly, leave a comment below. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.